Welcome to Complete Wave Lab 10 by Streamworks Audio. I'm your host and instructor, Walt Honeycutt, and for the next couple of hours, we're going to take an in depth look at Wave Lab. Now, Wave Lab is an incredibly sophisticated and powerful piece of software, and that presents a challenge to you as the user and to me as the instructor because Wave Lab is really seven different programs in one. Let's just take a look at the seven primary functions that Wave Lab has. And of these, about half are some form of editing. The other half are some form of publishing, and the odds are that you purchased WaveLab for one of these, maybe two. Now, WaveLab is marketed as a mastering suite, and even the term mastering is used two different ways. There's mastering in the sense of I'm going to take a, an audio file and perfect it, either remove errors and mistakes or optimize its sonic qualities. And then there's mastering in terms of taking a group of songs uh, putting them together into a cohesive file for either CD or album production. And WaveLab does both, and we're going to look at both. And my guess is the majority of uh, folks watching this are doing those two functions primarily. So that's where we're going to hang out and spend most of our time. But we will touch on all the other functions. We're going to do this in as straightforward a manner as possible. I mean, there are college courses on WaveLab. You can go an entire semester studying WaveLab and still not touch on everything. It's, it's that powerful. Uh, but we'll try to keep this focused on everything you need to know to get up and running fairly quickly. So to that end, uh, what I want to focus on in this first uh, introductory chapter is to show you how to get your audio interface connected and the basics of moving around the user interface. And then in chapter two, we'll take a much deeper look at user interface and, and start showing you where all the levers to pull are and buttons to press are and so forth and so on. And I would say the... Uh, Probably the, the single uh, biggest thing about WaveLab, I, I, of course, I don't know what level of software you're used to working on before, but this is a completely pro piece of software, like to the point where some of its forensic tools are used by folks like the FBI and the National Transportation Safety Board for analysis and so on. Uh, this is uh, designed to be placed in the hands of, of people working at the very highest level. So they've minimized the Mickey Mouse and uh, everything has been architected with an eye towards being super efficient. And that's great once you know it, but it can be really, this whole program can feel really slippery and frustrating uh, when you're first starting out. It, it was not designed to be opened, started, and obvious you know, how to use it. They dispensed with all of the, hi, I'm your talking paperclip guide type stuff. And uh, you're gonna love all this stuff once we get into it, but my goal, in, especially in chapter two and three, is to show you where all these little slippery things are that until you master them will just drive you up the wall. So what you're looking at on the screen here is the default view for WaveLab. And something that we normally don't cover until the end, I wanna pick up right here, and this is the workspaces concept. This is common across all the Steinberg products that I've interacted with. There's a menu at the top called workspace. And if you drop that down, there's a submenu for layouts and it offers a variety of presets here. And this is basically just a preset for how you want your windows to look on your display, whether you have a single monitor, multiple, etc. What I want to point out is if your screen doesn't look like what you're seeing on the tutorial, come to this menu, select the option for default, and it should snap to this. If you were to select another one, like say minimal, you can end up with, with this. I've seen that a couple of times. Now out of the box, if it looks like that, it's really disorienting as to what you're supposed to do with this. So let's go to the default for now. And as, we'll, as we see later in the, the presentation here, as we get into the different combinations of windowing and metering, depending on what, what one of those seven tasks you're doing, you're going to find a setup that works best for you. You use that same menu to, to save that layout, and you can snap back there in a, in a hurry. So, And with just the sheer number of meters and tools that WaveLab has to offer, you'll probably use the workspaces function more here than, than any other piece of software in this sort of you know, like the DAW world. So once you're once you're up and running here, one of the things that's different about WaveLab is that it's much more tab driven than menu driven. I mean, typically most programs you come up to the top here and start that that's where you all of your administrative functions are are consolidated. Uh, WaveLab is built more around uh, tabs floating around different places, and the the critical one here is the file tab. If we click on that, this is going to open up a whole bunch of functionality. Now, what I want to point out is if you, uh, if you open up the file menu as well, you'll see some similarities here. You've got options, excuse me, like uh, new, open, and import, down to preferences and tools, and you see those same functions echoed here to the side. Uh, 
however, there are there are some key differences. And if you, my recommendation is try to build the habit pattern of using the file tab rather than the file menu because the file tab uh, makes all of the options available, whereas it's somewhat truncated using the using the file menu. And so you can see color groupings here of green, yellow, red, and blue based on what those are collections of related functions. And uh, it's going to, if you uh, if you open new, you're going to get one, either the new uh, audio file or new audio montage. One of these two is probably what popped up on your screen. Uh, the tab that we want to work with immediately to get your connections established is down here is the preferences tab. And under preferences, we have a whole bunch of functions and then a whole bunch of sub-functions. Again, everything being tab-driven. So the first one is going to default is your global stuff, and this is pretty straightforward. You can uh, set up a bunch of administrative aspects of uh, how you want your program configured, language, and so forth. What we're interested in is the second one, audio connections. And in this uh, window, we have uh, a couple of menu options at the top and then four key tabs at the bottom. And the first is this drop down. This is where you're going to pick out your sound card or your audio interface. And if you're working straight off a laptop or something, this is probably going to be limited to your built-in audio. In our case, the, this Yamaha Steinberg FireWire interface is our primary. And so we're going to select that one. You can jump out to whatever your sound card is here and get its control panel. And one thing that I would point out about buffering, since WaveLab is uh, designed to be used with recordings made elsewhere, uh, you don't have, typically you don't have any sort of live performance interaction. And so you can afford a much larger buffer size than you would say in a DAW like Cubase or Pro Tools where you're very, very concerned about latency for the performer. All of that goes away here. So you can afford the luxury of using a much higher buffer if you want to, to just guard against dropouts and all, all the headaches that come from a small buffer size. But that's how all of this is uh, accessed right there. What uh, we want to pay most of our attention to are these four sub-tabs for playback, recording, external effects, which is new, and then our, our various options. And options is pretty self-explanatory on whether you want it defaulted to fade in and out and so forth. So if you're going to sit down, boot WaveLab for the first time, you want to import a piece of audio and start working with it, the first thing you need is some sort of playback connection. So if you open the playback tab, uh, this is probably completely empty if it's your first time launching the program. The first thing you want to do to create a new output bus to create the routing is to click the plus sign. And it's going to, in your case, it'll say bus number one. You can double click it and uh, name it whatever you want. We'll call this example bus. And then over to the right, your options for port selection. This is the physical connection in your rig where you want the signal to, to go to. What's available to the right will be driven by what your sound card uh, allows you. So if I change our whole system back to the built-in audio, uh, it's defaulted at a higher level. Okay, here we go. Uh, you can see the only options when I drop down those uh, menu items are built in one and two because the Macintosh here is a uh, it's a stereo beast. If I uh, reconnect it to the FireWire, now I have a whole bunch of options, and that's that's what's going to be driven by your your hardware setup in your in your studio. So in our case, we'll take the main playback bus. It's connected to the first and second analog outputs, and then you have the option to name it whatever you want over here. But that's the basic workflow. You're going to create a bus pick the outputs that you wanted to use, name them accordingly, and away you go. Now, uh, in this case, you see we've got now a total of four, and we've got some arrows here to the side. If you want, say, your surround bus, in this case, to be the default, you move it to the top of the list. Whatever's at the top of this list is what it's going to go to, say, when you start a new project. And in my case, we want to bring that main playback bus up to the top. Everything we just covered there will get you through the next four tabs effectively, but let's jump over to recording. And interestingly enough, I think, I think that this word right here, I think this is the only place in WaveLab where the word recording exists. It's just such an afterthought. You can do it, but it's not what it was designed to do at all. So if you, if you got this to use as a DAW, um, you can hit pause, box it back up, take it back to Guitar Center and buy Cubase. Uh, you can record with this, and the, the 
three biggest things that we use the recording function for are restoration projects. You can see we've got a uh, we've got a series of tape decks and things that will transfer into the digital domain and work on. Um, and then if you're doing podcasting, you'll use the recording bus for that. And then our others is cleaning up LPs and stuff. Um, and same thing, you can add multiple buses with the plus sign. You can delete them with the minus sign. And after you've selected the the recording bus, then you come over to the side and pick out uh, which inputs that you want it to use. And I don't know why those got knocked off, but that should be five and that should be six. And then within WaveLab, anytime I'm queuing up to do a, a tape restoration project, I just select the tape deck recording bus and I'm ready to bring in then another one for the reel to reel, another one for the booth, that sort of thing. Uh, and then you can name them appropriately. So that's the basic routing of your ins and outs right there. This next tab, external effects, is brand new. If you've worked with Pro Tools or Cubase, you're familiar with this. You can you can uh, take a, a standalone piece of hardware like this uh, Yamaha SPX90 Reverb. I'm pointing like you can see the, what's in the rack. Uh, or Grandpa's old tape player. We'll come back to this in the tips and tricks chapter. Uh, if you're not happy with the reverb, the 700,000 reverbs built into the software, you can use an old noisy hardware one from a pawn shop if you want. And all this is doing is setting up uh, uh, a couple of dedicated ins and outs on your sound card connected to that, whatever it is. And then from within the program, when you're, when you're dropping in insert effects or send effects, your hardware device will appear right next to all your VST plugins. Uh, which if, if you've invested a ton of money, like in a, I don't know, like a Eventide Harmonizer 5000, that's $10,000 unit, you would probably want to use that. So this now gives you a very easy built-in way to do that with the external effects. And we'll, um, we'll touch on that again when we're in the chapter on how to add effects. And then, like I said, this last tab is just uh, options. The one thing I would point out, I think in this day and age everybody realizes this, but there's an option here to release the driver um, when the program's in the background. And what basically a driver release means if, if you don't enable that, if WaveLab is running, it's going to it's going to grab a whole, it's going to take authority over your sound card and not let any other application use it. So if you're taking a break and want to go watch a cat video on YouTube, it's not going to play back. If you enable it to release the driver whenever WaveLab is in the background, meaning you're doing something else, it'll relinquish control of the sound card until you come back to it. Uh, it's just entirely up to you how you want to play with that. We usually actually don't release it because this is a dedicated facility. We have another room just for cat videos. Uh, but that's how, if, if you're having trouble, like every time WaveLab's up, none of my other stuff works right, it may be a driver driver release issue. So uh, once you have all of this stuff set up, then you can come over to the right here and you can save it as a preset. And uh, that makes it easy if you, like say, if you've got an elaborate uh, surround sound configuration and you want to return to that very quickly, um, it gives you a way to do that with, with a couple of keystrokes. So those are the basics of how to get set up with the audio connections. And let me just show you one more thing as we're on our way out here. Um, now that we've got all this done, if you wanted to get back to say your main, uh, your main workspace, your main editing window, it's not imme immediately clear how you would do that. And here's another example of what I mean by it's tab driven. The file tab that we click to open this, we click it again and it goes away. That workflow is pretty common throughout WaveLab. Uh, if we go back to the file tab again, most of them, not all of them, but most of them also have sort of a closed tab way over on the other side of the, way over the side of the screen there that'll um, perform the same function. Uh, but that's not 100%. Almost everything, if you double click or re-click the tab, then it'll, it'll return to its previous state. And then for those of you working in the Mac environment like we are, um, one thing that's odd about this program, probably because WaveLab grew up in a Windows environment, is if you click the red ball in the corner, instead of minimizing, it's actually gonna quit the program wholesale. Uh, for those of you not accustomed to Macs, that usually doesn't happen. Usually when you click the red ball, the, the active window is suppressed, but the, the application continues to run. This one doesn't do that. If, you, if you're in the habit of closing that to clean up your desktop, you're gonna habitually quit WaveLab when you don't mean to. So just Mac users, a heads up on that. So that's, uh, should get you to the point where you can go ahead and get your stuff connected. And then we'll jump back in here in the next chapter and start looking in detail at all the different types of windows and the options available to you.